Hello and welcome to this short video where I will try to explain how easy it is to bring data and configuration from Project Online and into CDS or Model Driven Power Apps. I have created a new environment called Block Import which is completely clean. It's a trial environment and it's uh, just configured out of the box. So I haven't done anything. You can see that when you go down here there are no apps right now and the only entities you'll find under, under data are just the standard entities out of the box. So to get started, we won't have to create any entities because um, the import or data integration function of uh, CDS will take care of that. So what we need to do is to go to data integration and create a new integration project, clicking here. What you'll notice is that you can import data from not just OData, which we'll use in just a second, but almost anything else possible. Web APIs for your lineup business systems, Salesforce, Azure, um, SharePoint lists, even blank tables or flat files, JSON, etc. Doesn't really matter. So the point being that when it comes to integrations and making sure that that data coming into your PPM system or Power App system, that that data is up to date, is something that is now built into to that whole CDS way of working. So to show you that, let's click on OData and add the URL, which is for those who are new to this, uh, the project online path up here for your PWA or whatever you have named it. And then it follows and looks something like this with an underscore API and then project data. Uh, so if you add this right here, you can then uh, click on authentication and select organizational account, sign in. And then we wait a little while. And now we are signed in. Then we can select next. And now we see all the different tables available from the OData feed. So for those who are familiar with Project Online, you should be uh, very familiar with all of these labels as well. To make it simple, in this case, we're gonna use projects and maybe even risks as well. So projects and risks. So no task data for this demo. And while we wait in just a second, you will see all the information that is available from within the risks table and the projects table. And now we can see the information here. So we can just select next, because the next step is where we can trim the data. So if I right click on project ID as a good example, I can select remove other columns right here. So now it's only the project ID, and then we can click on this little button, and we can now select the information we want to get from project online before it goes into the CDS or the Power App. It could be something like name, so the project name for instance, or the project owner name, it could be something like start date. So project start date, maybe even a finish date as well. So project finish date. It could also be something about cost if you had a custom field to carry over that information and that we hit okay. So this is now trimmed uh, for the occasion. The same thing could be applied to risks if needed, uh, but in this case, we're just gonna bring everything in. You can also combine the tables and set up many different options for, for how this data should be treated before it goes into CDS. And this rule will be applied and uh, be remembered for all the synchronizations that will take place in the future. So just hitting next right now will then bring us to the next area. And in this area, we can select to load the information, so just the data, into an existing entity. So if you already had created a project entity or a risk entity, you could just push in that data to that entity. In this case, we're going to take this one because this will create a new entity called projects in this case. So it even suggests a right name or an appropriate name. Um, we can add a description and we can also go in now and look at the information we just selected, start date, finish date, ID, cost, and so on. What kind of destination field type will that be like? And then trim that. For instance, project ID should not be multi-line text. And it even knows that as well. So if you want this ID to be your primary name field, which it will be in this case, project ID, then we have to change this one to text. So single line text. Project name, also single line. Project owner name, also single line. But all these different field types, you can then go in and tweak depending on the data you bring in. So this was just the way we can set up the projects. Then we go to the risks and also in this case, create a new entity where we map as well. In this case, we didn't trim a lot. So there are many different variables right here. So first off is that the key field used in this case will be the risk ID like this, which means that the risk ID and the project ID here as well 
we should be pretty sure that they are in the form of a text field. So text, text. We can also configure this one to text and go through all of it right now, um, which I won't do because of time. But title should definitely be text as well. Status, text, and so on and so on. Category, text. So just ignoring the rest and clicking next will now bring us to the place where we can set up the refresh job. This is extremely smart. First off, we can have it manually refreshed, which means you have to click a button every time you want the data to go in from Project Online into CDS. But if this is a, uh, an all-out migration, you probably don't want to update it at all. But the cases could be such as bringing in data from Azure DevOps or even your ERP systems like SAP uh, or any kind of information you have in a flat file. Um, and if you want this to be done automatically, you just select automatically and you can then set up the sequence saying every day like this uh, at 12.30 or 1 from today, I want this to take place. And then you click create. So now once it's setting up the job, you can actually lean back because the next step is where the system will just take over and run through a, a massive guide automatically done. So waiting now is just a matter of allowing uh, this routine to finish. So clicking done, we can now go immediately to the entities area and we should be able to find both the projects entity. So projects right here with the new custom fields. So oh, the CRB 39 is showing us that this is a customized uh, field. So all of these comes from Project Online. We can also see the data type that it's custom, whether or not it's required and so on. Relationship wise, we can also see that there are no relationships set, set up between uh, this entity and other entities. If we click on data, we can see that it has imported these projects or the project IDs uh, and when it was created as well. So um, the next thing could then be to look at the risks just to check that the data is there as well. So risks, same thing applies, tons of fields, many different types here because we did not uh, decide to filter on those data. We brought everything in from project. Clicking on relationships also shows nothing. And then we have the data area as well. So this kind of concludes how we can get both the configuration and uh, the data from Project Online and into this data CDS entity area. The rest from here is building your app, your power app, which is a matter of going into apps, creating a new one, picking the entities you need, and then publishing it as I've shown in a different blog post previously. Thank you for watching, more on this topic to come very soon and especially when the new project service is released. Thank you.